question from the WhatsApp. Nanjiba from Bangladesh. If someone promises to Allah that he will not commit such and such a sin, he did that. And he makes an unreal promise to Allah which he cannot keep. What should he do? And if a student observes three fast in the name of Allah as an expiation for breaking an oath, and if he hears from many that ten poor people should be fed or clothed, if he also promises Allah that he will clothe or food, give clothes or food to ten poor people for all the promises he has made to Allah in his life, which he could not keep, and he breaks his oath, now he has to give clothes or food to ten poor people as expression for breaking the same oath again. Nanjiba for Bangladesh is that if someone promises to Allah and does not uh, keep that promise, what should he do? Here you have to make a differentiation between a promise to Allah and an oath to Allah. There's two differences. When you promise something, it is you're telling Allah, okay, I will do this, I will do that. That's different than taking an oath. If you take an oath, it should have certain clause. Like how Allah takes an oath of fig, Allah takes an oath. Oath of Al-Asr, Al-Fajr, then, then of the mountains. So when you take an oath, you take oath of something. And taking oath is of different types. What scholars say. That, so promise is something else that, okay, I promise that I will do something. That I promise I will be good. I will promise I will be truthful. That's different. I'm making a commitment to Allah. But taking oath is different. An oath, normally the Prophet said, the Sahabas always said, there are many Sahihas who said, that the Prophet discouraged us from taking oaths. Oath means, you said that if I pass the examination, I will go for Umrah. Or if I pass the examination, I will give charity of $1,000 to the poor people. So this type of oath, the Prophet discouraged. It says that taking oath does not change the Qadr. It only makes a miser person give in charity. So when you're taking an oath, there are different types of oaths. Some oaths which are good to take, some oaths which are not good to take. Some amuba. The oaths that if you ask and you take an oath of Allah, that if so and so thing happens, I will do this sort of worship. It's not encouraged. It's not haram. Because you are putting a stipulation to Allah that, okay, if I pass the examination, I will pray to Rakat Nafil. I'll go for Umrah. That, and if you do that act, if you pass the examination, it is as though you're forced to do it. You're not doing it out of your own free will. So that's one of the reasons. Second is that as though you are bartering with Allah. That if my sickness is cured, I will go for Umrah. If my sickness is cured, I will fast 10 days. Whatever it is. So the Prophet said, the Qadr is not changed. So what's going to happen? You won't happen. What's written in your destiny will happen. So if you take an oath with bartering something with Allah, it's not encouraged in Islam. It's not haram, but it's not encouraged. The Prophet said, it only makes a miser person give charity. So miser person says that, okay, if I get healthy, I will give $1,000. Okay, the miser person doesn't give charity. So at least he'll give $1,000. So the Prophet personally preferred give charity. Okay, I've decided I'll give charity today. $1,000. Very good. I decide I'll give charity $2,000. Very good. But if you say I will pass, then I'll give charity. It's not encouraged. So oath means you are bartering something. If this thing happens, I'll do this. So these sites of oath, Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 89, that, that if the oath is unintentional, Allah will forgive it. But if it's an intentional oath, then if you do not keep it, if you do not fulfill the oath, give a kafara, kafara you mean, give kafara, give expiation of Feeding 10 poor people, miskin people, and feed them the same way how you feed your family. So if you're a rich person and you spend maybe $100 on per meal, so feed 10 people with $100 each. If you're a poor person who feeds maybe $1 per meal, so feed 10 people with $1. Or clothe 10 people, same how you clothe your family, or free a slave. So this is the condition put by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Maida chapter number 5 verse number 89 that if it's unintentional oath, Allah will forgive but if it's intentional and if it is oath done by you and if you do not fulfill it feed 10 people, poor people how you feed your family or clothe 10 people or you free a slave. If you cannot do this then 
you fast for three consecutive days. So if you make an oath, the best the Prophet said is do it. As long as the oath is not a haram oath. Now there are some oaths which are haram. For example, you say that I will go to Darga and put 10 candles on the Darga. So this is wrong. Or if you say that I have uh, taken an oath or done commitment. One is a commitment, one is a promise, the other is a difference. And if you say that if this thing happen, I'll do this. If this thing happen, I'll do idol worship. Idol worship is haram. So anything you say, if I pass the examination, I will do idol worship. Idol worship is haram. So in these conditions, if you commit, if you take an oath of doing a sin, then the Prophet said, don't do the sin, give the kafara. So if you have given an oath to commit a sin, or given a promise to commit a sin, don't do that sin, do a kafara, or feeding 10 people, or clothing 10 people, or freeing a slave. If you cannot afford it, then you can fast for three consecutive days. There are some things which is not a sin, but you can't afford to do. You say that if I pass the examination, I will give $10,000 charity. You don't even earn $1,000, I will give $10,000. Suppose you say that if I pass the examination, I'll go for hajj, and you're sick. That hell doesn't permit you. So if you make an oath which you cannot fulfill, it's not a haram oath, going to hajj is good, giving 10,000 charity is good, so then you give kafara. That is feed 10 people, poor people, equivalent to how you feed your family, or clothe 10 people, or free your slave. If you can't afford this, then fast three consecutive days. So one oath is which is haram, you should not do it, only give kafara. One oath is which you have committed but you cannot do it, because you can't afford to do it, or you are not healthy, you don't have the money. Then the third type is, which is muba, okay if I pass, I will give charity and you have the money, then you give charity. This is optional. One thing is there which is oaths which are good. That you have asked for, you have said you'll do this without putting a condition to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I have, I have committed to Allah that this year I'll give charity of $10,000. And your business goes down. Oath is good. It's not against anything. It's not saying that only if this happened. You have given a commitment. You have given an oath to Allah that this thing I will do this year. And your business goes down. So you had the intention. So if you're given those and your business goes down, you cannot give $10,000. Okay, feed 10 people. Can't feed 10 people, clothe 10 people, or free a slave. Cannot do this, fast three consecutive days. So one is something which is haram, you should not do it, give kafara. One is you have said something, you don't have the capacity. One is you had the capacity, but then the business didn't go well. So at that time, the best is to fulfill the oath. Whatever oath you have given to Allah, unless it's a sin, unless it's haram, best is to fulfill. You cannot say, if you have the money, your business is done very well, you promise $10,000, why give $10,000? Feeding 10 people will only cost me $100, cost me only $200, why give $10,000? So this is wrong. The Prophet said, if your business is done well, if you have given oath, fulfill the oath first. If you cannot, then the kafara is there. Or if it's a oath which is committing a sin. So you have to differentiate between this. So based on all this, the answer is very clear cut that if you promise something, if it's not a sin, you have to do it. And then again, the question is asked that he has made many promises, he hasn't fulfilled. For each promise he hasn't fulfilled, he has to either feed 10 people or he has to each oath that he has taken if he doesn't fulfill. Either feed 10 people or clothe 10 people or free a slave or three consecutive days. So then if he says, okay, I will feed 10 people or clothe 10 people or fast three consecutive days, and he doesn't do this also. So if he has not done 10 oaths, he hasn't kept. And this 11th one, so he has to give 11 times to 10 people. You can't say only once is sufficient, no. If he cannot afford it, at least he should fast for each oath three days. So if 10, from, uh, 10 oaths he has taken and he has not fulfilled it, then he has to fast 10 into 3, 30, 3 consecutive days, you want to take a gap, take a gap, again 3 consecutive days. And the last one which he did, he did not fulfill, again he has to fast another 3 days for that. So for every oath that or commitment you have given to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is a difference, you should understand that, that I will not do a sin, you're telling Allah, that's different than doing an oath and a commitment. So both are different. So if you have given an oath and a commitment, then you have to fulfill, can't fulfill, then is the kafara. Hope that answers the question.